Hi folks, it's Pete. Um, have you missed me? No, I didn't think so. I haven't made a video for over a year. I've uh, been toying with the idea for the last two or three months. Best time to do it, but I haven't got round to it. Until I saw that uh, Rob of Sound Strange fame had uh, hit 500 subs and was doing a competition. Now, you probably all know Rob, but in case you don't, lovely fella, speaks with such passion and intelligence about music, shows all sorts, jazz, folk, rock, but his main shtick is classical. But if, even if you're not a classical fan, I'd watch his videos because they're an education in themselves. I don't think there's a um, VC channel which has made me buy so many albums. I've now got a small but growing modern classical section, thanks to Rob. Thank you, Rob. <laughs> anyway, he's uh, doing a proper competition, not a, a lottery. And it's a bloody difficult one. Anyway, let's get on with it. The first part is a show part, which is relatively easy. <laughs> as easy as it gets. Um, first one is show a record with a literary connection. So here goes. And this is Bo Hansen's Lord of the Rings. My, probably my favourite book of all time. Bo Hansen's a Swedish keyboard player. This album was released in 72. Brilliant stuff. Alright, that's the first one. Second one was show a record with an artistic connection. Now, I didn't if, know if that meant lyrically one of the songs or cover wise, so I'm showing two. First one, Wings Band on the Run, for the song Picasso's Last Words, Drink to Me. And there you go, Pablo Picasso. As Rob is Irish, I thought I'd show this. This is Elton John's Blue Moves, and the cover is called, is a painting called The Guardian Readers by Patrick Proctor. Now, Patrick Proctor was a artist and a son of Dublin, as is Rob. Though Patrick left, I think, Dublin to move to London when he was four. Died in 2003. So, and that's his painting, The Guardian Readers. Right, moving on. Oh, I'm going to show two for the next one as well. Excuse me a second. Show a record with a historical connection. Well, I had to show another keyboard player, favourite keyboard player. This is Rick Wakeman with his album Six Wives of Henry VIII. There you have the Six Wives. I absolutely adore this album. This is one of my favourite albums of all time. Shame it never made anything as good. <laughs> That's, but I also mainly I wanted to show this album. Al Stewart's Past, Present and Future. Al Stewart came out of the uh, British folk boom of the 60s. Uh, this album, a lot of his stuff is historically based, but this album in particular has songs like Old Admirals, Warren and Harding, The Last J Day of June 1934, Post-World War II Blues, uh, his magnum opus, Nostradamus. The song I wanted to, mainly wanted to uh, concentrate on is his song that opens side to Roads to Moscow. This is about a Russian soldier in the Second World War uh, being where his unit is being beaten back to Moscow by the Nazis. Um, they eventually turn the tide and the song covers their um, march into Berlin. 
uh, but he gets unfortunately he gets captured for a day and upon get, uh, obtaining his freedom and getting back to Russia he's promptly arrested and sent to a gulag um, Al Stewart has said this is based on uh, the great Russian writer Solzhenitsyn uh, so this could have actually answered the first show question the literary connection as well brilliant album next up uh, a record not sung in English I have a lot of stuff uh, that's not in English I prefer that uh, artists and bands sing in their uh, native language even if I don't understand it and at the end of the day the voice is uh, just another instrument but being of Italian parentage I had to show an Italian album and this is Stormy Six with Un Biglietto del Tra. Now Stormy Six were one of the original bands in the RIO, the Rockin' Opposition movement, along with bands like Henry Cow, uh, Universero Artzoid, Samla Mana Samana. Uh, they, they were the Italian leg of that movement. So as you can guess, they were very political, left-leaning in their views. Uh, this has, uh, I bought this thinking it was going to be a typical Italian prog album, <laughs> but it isn't. It, uh, it's quite folky in its in stylings. And again, I could have put this as a, a record with its historical connections, because it's got a song about the Battle of Stalingrad, the arrival of the Americans in Italy in the Second World War. Excellent stuff. But in homage to Rob, who is Irish and lives in Spain, I thought I'd quickly show Clanad, Chanu, where a lot of these songs are in Gaelic. And unfortunately, most of my Spanish albums seem to be instrumental. But I do have this, which is high here uh, but I think most of these songs are in Basque rather than in Spanish itself well just for you for Rob there you go finally a song sorry a record your sure record which taught you something um I have to show this one because music's meant so much to me. It's my passion in life. Uh, I, would, I nearly showed a focus album because I've, as I've said, they were the first band that got me into music. But I have to show this. I can still remember the day I first heard it. I can visually, if I close my eyes, I can visualize putting it on the record player. It was lent to me by a friend who uh, sadly passed away now, but it was only a two or three months into my uh, love of music. And that album is Yes As Close To The Edge. And this taught me of what music could do, the power and the beauty of music. And it used to annoy me that a lot of critics would uh, say that prog rock had no soul no feeling this is the epitome of soul to me this touches me so deeply it still does and to be honest sod the any the naysayers and the critics any music which touches you in any way makes you happy sad whatever if it touches you that strongly that music has soul and this taught me about that about music. Love it. And, oh, unfortunately, we get to the second section, the tell section, which is all about Rob himself. And I'm sure I'm going to upset him and annoy <laughs> him with some of these. This is difficult. Um, the first one is 
to name his favourite film and another soundtrack he has from the same year. Now, he said this, he gave us a clue that this film was a year, I think came out a year before he was born. But, as soon as I don't know when he's born, which is, we'll get to in the next question. The first thing that came to mind was the film 2001 A Space Odyssey. Because I know he's a great fan of classical music and Ligeti. And there, his music is used in the film. So I'm going with 2001 A Space Oddity, which, Odyssey, not Oddity, which came out in 1968. So the other soundtrack from that year, I'll go with Once Upon a Time in the West, with a soundtrack by Ennio Morricone. Let's uh, part two. Now, I, I, this is where I think I'm going to upset him. <laughs> because <laughs> I'm going to make him out probably to be a lot older than he is. He says, name two albums he has in his collection from the month and year in which he was born. So if I heard him right and that his favourite film was from a year before he was born and I've gone for Space Oddity 68, then he must have been born in 1969. So I'm going to say October 1969 and the two albums in his collection which were released at that time were Frank Zappa's Hot Rats, which I think Rob is a big fan of, and the other one, which again I think I'm sure he's a band he loves. Pentangle, Basket of Light. Both of these came out in October 1969. Again, apologies, Rob, if I'm making you out to be older than you are. <laughs> right. Part three. The two composers of, which he, of whom he has the most records. Uh, I have gone with Stravinsky because I know I think he loves the right to spring and, and I think he's got multiple copies of that if I'm, I remember rightly and as he gave us a clue that they both began with the same letter so if it's Stravinsky I'm going to go with Stockhausen you know he likes his avant-garde modern classical so yeah Stravinsky and Stockhausen Ah, uh, the next part. I'm gonna, I can't do. I'm not sure I can do. Uh, the linked. Which album was the main inspiration for his starting to play guitar? Now, he, he said he started in 1990, but I doubt the album is from 1990. I would initially have thought maybe one of the artists to come out of the uh, the UK folk scene, Bert Jan, John Rainbow, something like that. But the second, question five, he goes on to play five tunes by that artist and he says to name the tunes. Um, they didn't sound like, to my ears anyway, like uh, they were from that era. So, honestly, <laughs> I haven't a clue. Um, I'm going to be facetious and just say, Captain Beefheart, Trout Mask Replica. <laughs> and I can't name the tunes. I am so sorry, Rob. Anyway, that's my entry, my pitiful entry. Uh, congratulations, Rob. You well deserve the 500. Hopefully it won't be too long before you're celebrating your 1,000 subscribers. And if you do, and you have a competition, make it a bit easier, please. Cheers, folks. Hope to see you soon. Oops. Can't get this mouse to work. Bye.